Hello everyone and welcome to FPGA C, C++ Digital Signal Processing and Real-Time Control Tutorials. This is the first tutorial in a series of tutorials on the implementation of real-time digital signal processing and control algorithms on FPGAs. In this particular video, I will explain how to install the MicroBlaze soft processor core and I will explain how to run the C code on the FPGA. As you can see over here, this video tutorial is based on the Nexus A7 FPGA. However, everything explained in this video can be generalized to other FPGA boards. Before I start, it's a very good idea to give you a brief overview of MicroBlaze. MicroBlaze is a Xilinx soft processor core. It's highly optimized for embedded applications. And it's very easy to install this soft processor core and it's very easy to add different peripherals such as UART connection, such as GPIO devices, such as ADC cards, etc. Moreover, you can easily adjust MicroBlaze soft core processor to work as a simple microcontroller or to work as a real-time processor. I will cover in depth microcontroller implementation and different applications in my future videos. However, for the time being, and in this video, I will focus on the installation of MicroBlaze and on how to generate a C code that can be used to control FPGAs. Also, to make this video as simple as possible and easy to follow, I will add only a single peripheral to my FPGA, and that peripheral is the UART connection. UART connection will be used to plot or to print simple messages from FPGA to my computer screen. Okay, let's start. As you can see over here, I'm using Vivado to install my MicroBlade soft core processor. And I'm using Vivado 2022.1. However, I believe that you can also use different versions of Vivado. First, I click on Create Project. Next, I click on Next. I will be using just default settings over here. I click on Next. Over here, I use standard settings, I click on next. And here I need to select my board or my processor. I will click on boards and I will search for my board. It's Nexus A7100T and you click on next. Click on finish. Next, we need to create a block design. Consequently, I will click over here on Create Block Design. And I will click on OK. OK, so the first step is to add our processor. I will click on this plus sign that is on Add IP or Add Intellectual Property and I will search for micro blaze and I will click double click on micro blaze and here's my micro blaze since this video is mainly an introduction video I will not go in depth and explain all the details related to the micro blaze processor the main emphasis of this video is on simple implementation consequently I will just click over here in order to run block automation. So let me just briefly go over this screen. Here we can select local memory. I will select 64 over here and I'm not going to play with these settings for the time being. You can for example use different presets. You can use microcontroller presets, you can use real time or application. However, for the time being, I will not change the default settings. And I will click on OK. After some time, 
you will see that Vivaro will automatically perform all the connections and it will generate a microblaze soft core processor together with certain blocks that you can see in one moment. And you can immediately see over here that besides the microblaze block, we also have several other blocks. We have this block over here, we have this block, this block, and this block. Next, we need to do a few adjustments. We need to adjust this clocking wizard over here. So I will double click on the clocking wizard and this screen will open. Over here, I need to adjust my clock. I'm not going to use a custom clock. I will use a system clock. This is very important. Then you can go over and read more in the help or in some, on some tutorials online about these options. However, I'm not going to cover them in this video. Output clock is a very important setting and you can see that the output clock is 100 megahertz. This is very important. Now, if you scroll down, it's very important to adjust this setting. Reset type. This option is related to the reset of the board. The particular board I'm using has an active low reset type, so I will adjust this part over here. You also have some other settings, and here you can look into the summary that I'm not going to explain in this video. And consequently, you click on OK. Again, you run connection automation to automatically connect all the blocks. Over here, we will select all the blocks and we will click on OK. Over here, we can observe that we have two external ports. This port is the reset port coming from the physical reset of the board. And we have the system clock, which is basically our clock. Next, we need to add the UART connection. So I will expand this window over here. You have different option over, options over here. You have sources. These are basically the source files. These are the basically the design files that I will cover in the SQL. Next, we have another menu. This is the design menu that provides also different descriptions. Here we have signals. And for us, the most important part is the board part. Over here, we can select different peripherals to add to our design. We are not going to add segments. We are not going to add RAM. We are not going to add GPIOs. I will cover GPIOs in my future video. However, we will add the UART connection. So UART connection will enable us to communicate between our computer and our board. That is, our board will use our computer display in order to print some messages. So I will click on USB UART and I will click on connect board component. And over here, I will select this option, XC UART. XC is basically the main bus of the system, roughly speaking. and I click on OK. And over here you can see that something changed, right? So you need to run connection automation and over here you will add the new block and you will integrate it. And here is our UART. It's being properly added. Now, it's always a good idea to validate your design. You can validate your design by clicking over here or pressing F6. So let's validate our design and everything is successful. There are no errors or critical warning in this design. Next, we will click on sources and we will click over here, do the right click and we will create the HDL wrapper. We will choose this option, let Vivado manage wrapper and auto update, and we click on OK. OK, and that's it. 
we have generated a simple microblaze design that has microblaze, few other components, and the most important component is the UART peripheral. Let us now generate the beat stream. This option will automatically run synthesis and run implementation. And I will click on yes. I will choose the default settings, click on OK, and this process will take a few minutes, maybe 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the strength and on the speed of your processor and your computer. After no more than 5 minutes, I obtain this screen. Here it's written that the beat stream generation successfully completed. That is, everything is okay. The design is okay, synthesis and implementation processes went smoothly, and I have my beat stream. Consequently, I will click on OK. However, you don't need to click on OK, you can simply click on Cancel. However, I just want to see a few implementation design details. Here you're basically loading device and you can see your implementation over here. We can see power option, timing, some statistic, methodology, design runs, DRC, and over here you can track messages. You have 625 warnings, however, these are not critical warnings. And for the time being, simply ignore these warnings because you will always see some warnings. More advanced users can fix these warnings, however, they are not crucial and your design can still work. Next, we need to generate a C code for controlling this board. In order to generate the C code, we'll click on File, Export, Export Hardware. We click on Next, we'll click over here on Include Bitstream, we'll use the standard options, we click on Next, and we click on Finish. This step will create a hardware file that will be used in Vitis. In order to launch Vitis, we will click on Tools, and we will click on Launch Vitis. But before we launch Vitis, let me briefly explain you what is Vitis. Vitis is basically nothing less than an environment for coding in C and C++. Consequently, you use Vitis in order to code this board. That is, use Vitis to implement microcontrol functions, to implement GPIO functions, etc. So let's launch Vitis. I will simply click on launch. Okay, now over here you can see my previous code and I'll be not using this code in this video. Consequently, I will click on File, New, Application Project. Next. And over here I will click on Create a new platform from hardware. Over here, I need to find my hardware file generated by Vivado. So I click on Browse. And in my case, all the files are under Users over here. And the folder is Project Tree. Over here, you can see the hardware file. And you open this file. Here it is. You click on Next. You can give a name. Hello one. We click on next. And we are not going to play with these options over here. We click on next. Now, this is very important. You have several options over here. You can use an empty, empty application in C or empty application in C++. However, I will be using hello world. And we click on finish. Okay, so here is our project, here are the source files, and here is our hello world. And voila, 
we are in C programming environment with all the power that C can provide us. Okay, so let us modify this code in order to print this message hello world in a while loop. Consequently, I will erase this part over here and over here I will define a while loop, an infinite while loop that will print this message. However, there is a problem with this code. Namely, serial communication is not super fast. And consequently, this code can run very fast. However, the serial communication will not be able to properly transfer this message to my computer screen. Consequently, I need to introduce a small delay over here. There are many ways to introduce delay in C or C++. However, I will use a very simple solution that will not require to implement additional libraries. So I will simply define a for loop. And this for loop will iterate many times, starting from i is equal to 0 until i is smaller than 100 thousand and I will implement I over here I will end my for loop so this for loop will introduce a delay in our system consequently let us compile and build this project I will click over here and hopefully we will not have any errors everything is perfect you can click on problems there are a few infos over here however we are not interested about further details the next step is to attach your FPGA to the USB port. Okay, now my FPGA is attached. And the next step is to upload this code to our FPGA. We can upload the code by clicking over here, right click, and run as launch hardware. And we click on OK. Sometimes this step creates some errors, so I might have to repeat this step twice. So let's see what will happen. Of course, there is an error, and I will repeat the whole procedure once more. And this time, everything should be fine. Okay, now our FPGA is programmed. That is, the code is being uploaded. The code is uploaded, however, we don't see any message on our screen. So how to see the message? Well, we need to open a program that will enable us to communicate with the FPGA. In my case, I'm using the Mobile X Term program for establishing the communication. This is a very nice program and it's super easy to use and more importantly, it's completely free. So, let's create a session. I will click over here. I will click on Serial. And over here, I need to select a port. As you can see over here, Mobile X Term is able to recognize that my FPGA is on the communication port number 6. And I will use the default option. However, you might have to adjust the speed, BPS, depending on your board. However, I will use just the default settings and I will click on OK. And here it is, voila! So what's happening over here? Our FPGA is running the code, it's running this code and it sends through the UART connection to our computer this message, hello world. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.